Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Fitzgerald, a lecturer in music language at the University of Western Australia's Conservatorium of Music. In this video, we're going to talk about identifying cadences from notation. For help with identifying cadences orally, check out the video linked in the description below. So, what is a cadence? A cadence is a point of arrival that occurs at the end of a phrase. You can think of it a bit like musical punctuation. We use commas and full stops to delineate phrases in written and spoken language, and cadences serve much the same function in music. At a cadence, the forward motion of the music stops, and the entire musical fabric of harmony, melody, counterpoint, rhythm, and meter work together to mark the completion of a musical phrase. I'm a classical guitarist, as you can see, so let's have a listen to the opening of Fernando Sor's lovely little etude in D major. on to the next phrase. So in this example, we have two cadences that divide the passage into two parallel four-bar phrases. The first phrase closes on the dominant, an A major chord, in measure four, and the second phrase closes on the tonic, in measure eight. The first phrase ends rather inconclusively in measure four. The harmony is on the dominant, which has a strong desire to resolve to the tonic, and we're left hanging with scale degree two in the top voice, which again has a strong tendency to pull down the scale degree one. It feels unfinished. Even though the rhythm doesn't change, there's no pause, this is still a cadence. It marks the completion of a musical idea, as evidenced by the melody from the beginning, restarting at the upbeat to bar five. Here's the melody at the opening, and here's the melody at bar five. Sor has given us some other musical clues to indicate that this is an important moment, including the chromaticism in the preceding bar and the strong restruck suspension on the downbeat of measure four. This type of cadence, that is a cadence ending on the dominant, the five chord, is called an imperfect cadence. You might hear it referred to as a half cadence, but for the purposes of your ATAR exam you should call it imperfect. Any cadence that ends on the dominant is called an imperfect cadence. Composers employ imperfect cadences precisely because they sound inconclusive and demand that the music carries on to cadence in the tonic. You can think of them a bit like a comma in a sentence. It marks the end of an idea, but you can't stop there as you're still in the middle of a sentence. be very satisfying to end there. Sora does indeed carry on, restating melodic and harmonic material from the beginning, but starts to take a different direction in bar 6. This leads to a much more conclusive cadence on the tonic, with an A dominant 7th chord in measure 7, leading to the tonic D major in measure 8. That E, scale degree 2, that had left us hanging in measure 4, now finally resolves down to the tonic D. The melody stops on the D, and for the first time, we have a change in the rhythm and texture and a rest on beat four. This feels conclusive, like a full stop in a sentence. Here's the second phrase again. When you have a cadence consisting of a five chord going to a one chord, it is called a perfect cadence. You'll notice in this example that both five and one chords are in root position and the top voice moves scale degrees 2 to 1. This is the strongest way to have a perfect cadence, but you'll find sometimes one of the chords is in an inversion, or the one chord doesn't end with the tonic in the top voice. For the purposes of your ATAR exam, we're going to refer to any cadence that goes from a 5 chord to a 1 chord as a perfect cadence. These are the two types of cadence that you'll encounter most frequently. Imperfect cadences, which end on 5, and can be approached by any chord, and perfect cadences, which must be 5 to 1. There are two other cadences which you'll need to know, but which occur less frequently. A plagal cadence goes from chord 4 to chord 1, 
and is often called the Amen cadence because it occurs frequently at the close of church hymns. Here's an example. cadences lack the strong goal-directed motion of perfect cadences. The four chord simply doesn't have the same drive to resolve to the tonic as the dominant does. And as a result, plagal cadences occur with much less frequency than perfect cadences, and are usually used to simply prolong the tonic. Finally, we have interrupted cadences, which are chord 5 to chord 6. You might also find it referred to as a deceptive cadence, and you'll hear why. Here's an example. An interrupted cadence is a bit like a bait and switch. We expect the V chord to resolve to a one chord for a perfect cadence, but the rug is pulled out from under us and instead we get the tonic chord's minor substitute, chord 6, which shares two common tones with the one chord. Much like an imperfect cadence, a deceptive cadence sounds incomplete and in need of resolution, and thus propels the music forward. So to recap, there are four main cadences that you'll need to know. The first is imperfect, which is any chord going to 5. It sounds incomplete, as a 5 chord needs to resolve to the tonic. The second is perfect, which is chord 5 to chord 1. It is the most conclusive of all the cadences. Have a look at the final cadence in each piece of your current repertoire. I'd be willing to bet that each and every one ends with a perfect cadence. The third is plagal, which is chord 4 to chord 1. It is less common, and due to four's lack of goal direction, essentially expands the tonic. And lastly, interrupted, which is five to six. It creates a bit of a surprise, and the need for the music to carry on and resolve properly to the tonic. I hope this video has deepened your understanding of cadences and their musical effect. If you'd like to learn about writing cadences or identifying cadences orally, check out the videos linked in the description below, and good luck on your ATAR exams.